house and I must say uh, thanks, a big thanks to Jairam Ramesh who's of course not here now. He probably summed up many a points which was not probably in the, in the, in the same strain as was being spoken by that side of the house because if actually if you're looking at the economy with a discerning view you see that growth may have come down but it's not a recession yet or it won't be a recession ever and therefore yes ma'am I did say that so consciously all of us have to rise above because economy also has a very big foundation in sentiments. This house should have confidence and this house shall have the confidence when I give all the data before you so that we together as responsible members representing this Council of States understand that the economy has got to be given a lot more support as we are trying to do and that is done with an intention of keeping the growth up. So there are a few things which I'll start just so that we know. So I'm quoting some of the macroeconomic data. And here I'm quoting based on the sum and also the last year's performance of UPA2 and NBA1 which is the period related to 2009-14 and 14-19. I have a reason to do it. You must permit me and you must kindly hear. So India's real GDP growth was at 6.4 at the end of 2009-14 five-year rule. Whereas between 14 and 19, it, is, it was at 7.5. Let's first compare that. Second, the headline inflation, sir, between 2009 and 14, and between 14 and 19, the year when we closed 19, headline inflation at 2014 was 10.3, whereas when NDA 1 concluded in 2019, it was 4.5 only. Inflation again, sir. Headline inflation minus food and energy is your core inflation. 2009 to 14, you pay two times at 14. Core inflation was 9.4, whereas 2014 19, at 19, it was 5.1 only. Then food inflation, sir. Between 2009 and 14, ending 14, it was 11.2. Food inflation, 11.2. And where was it? At 19 when NDA 1 finished, just 3.5 only. I go to FDI inflows, sir, gross. FDI inflows gross, 2009 to 14, at 14, we are talking about 189.5 billion dollars. Whereas when we finished in 19, it was 283.9 billion dollars. Again, sir, foreign exchange reserves, some members mentioned about it. I'd like to give the comparison. Foreign exchange reserves at period end of 2009-14, was $304.2 billion, whereas at the period end, 2014-19, it was $412.9 billion. I go over to some related to domestic demand. Demand was one of the things on which a lot of uh, members, I remember Keshav Rauji also speaking about demand side. I just want to give you central government's period end liabilities to GDP liabilities to GDP ratio 2009-14 period ended with 52.2 percent 
whereas it was only 49.4% at the end of 2014-19. The next data, sir, again relating to demand side, central governments, general governments period and liabilities to GDP, liabilities to GDP, 67.1 at the time of 2014, five-year rule of UPA2, whereas UPA1, it just increased by one point, 67.3. Domestic supply, another indicator worth looking at, sir. Food grain production in the end year of the UPA2 time is 265 million tons, whereas at the end of 14-19, which is NDA1, is 285 million tons. Services, real GVA growth, services sector, real gross value addition growth, 7.4 at the end of 2009-14, whereas it increased to 8.4 at the end of 2019, which is 14-19 onwards, NDA1, sir. I'll also refer to manufacturing real GVA growth, gross value addition growth. At the end of UPA 2, sir, 2009-14, 5.3 was the manufacturing real GVA growth, gross value addition growth, whereas at the end of 2014-19, NDA 1, it rose to 8.4%. So let's keep that in mind, sir. External demand, sir, if I spoke about domestic demand and, uh, and domestic supply, now I'm talking about external demand, sir. Gross remittances. UPA 2, 2009-14, gross remittances were 313 US billion dollars, whereas 2014-19, NDA 1, it was 342. 313 versus 342 gross remittances. Net portfolio investment, on which I've been questioned about why did you have to withdraw, uh, you're favoring the suit board. I'll give a complete reply on that, but let's look at the position, sir. Net portfolio investment at the end of 14, after U, uh, UPA 2, was 59.1%, uh, one uh, billion dollar. Whereas NDA 1, ending uh, March 19, sir, is that 59.1 billion dollar has gone up to 67.2 billion dollars. And the final one in this list is the external debt to the GDP at the period end. External debt to GDP ratio, which is a percentage ratio, at the end of UPA 2, that is 2014, 23.9% was the external debt G to GDP ratio, which came down, external debt to GDP, came down within five years from 23.9 to 19.7, sir. I would like to highlight this, external debt to GDP, that's the reduction, and therefore when we are talking about macroeconomic data and government now facing a situation on which the general sphere of talk or some members said, oh no, no, you, you don't understand economy, you just seem to be floating, I'm sorry. On every one of the points, sir, I will give you detailed, specific performance-based data. So if that is the first thing which I had to highlight, I'd like to now go to the point as to why at all in 19, the July budget had to come up with steps and also some of the members started talking about, oh, public sector banks are making provision, which means you've allowed them to run away with the money which was given. I'm sorry, sir, we, I'm sure members who understand how bookkeeping happens, accounts are maintained, provisioning doesn't mean the money is taken uh, away by them, their assets will be confiscated, the assets will be auctioned, the money will be paid back. 
to the concerned banks. So to have to continuously go on with this argument saying bank made a provision, it means you have written their loans off, is completely wrong. I like to place before you all, when provisioning is made, it is made only because annually the books will have to be maintained. But the pursuit of those who have cheated the banks, willfully or un uh, uh, unknowingly, will happen, the assets will be brought, and the assets will be brought back to make sure that the banks and the other lenders will get their money back. So let that assurance be there in the minds of uh, people who are talking about public sector banks which are making provisioning in their accounts. So then, when I presented the budget, I did speak about steps that we were taking, and before me, even the economic survey mentioned about the four R's which we adopted as a policy. What are the four R's, sir? I like to repeat from the economic survey and from my budget speech. There were four R's, which is essentially to address the twin balance sheet problem, about which all of us know. What is the twin balance sheet problem? Corporates took money from banks. Their balance sheet went bad because they no longer could not make their profits. As a result, they couldn't pay the bank, NPAs grew, banks' balance sheets went back. So, twin balance sheet problem. In order to address that, we came up with a four R's policy. Recognition of the problem, recapitalization of the bank, the point that many of them are picking up, resolution of the problem, and also reforms. What did that mean? Recognition of the problem. A review of the banks, which many of you are aware, Dr. Manmohan Singh is here, he'll know what happens in the Reserve Bank as regards quality assessment, uh, asset quality review, which the banks have done, Reserve Bank has done. A review of banks' assets were all done, and the, they were recognize, recognized for the problem of NPA that they have, and consequent to the NPAs, as a proportion of the gross advances which have been given, the banks' NPAs, naturally increased once you started recognizing the problem which prevails in them, you had to admit that this many number of NPAs prevailed. And what was the number? In 2009 to 14, they were only 2.9 percent. Because, I'm sorry, I'm, I may have to say this, and it may sound political, that's when the phone banking was also happening. So obviously, the recorded number of NPAs at that time was very low, 2.9. It takes a while for the NPAs to show up. And when did it show up and when did it start showing up? Post-2014. The phone banking continued and 8.4% of NPAs were recognized between 14 and 19. And that figure, of course, I've stated in the parliament, I'll state it again. It had come down from 10 lakh crores to 8 lakh crores because we pursued those fellows who went away without paying the banks. So it's all right to give probably not so worthy a client money, but certainly for us, it's not right to let the fellow sit on it, but we pursued them. And the moment we started pursuing them, some of them stayed in the country, some of them fled. And those who fled are coming back. Their assets are being confiscated. And that is the story, sir. And that's the story why we needed the four hours. And the four R's began with recognizing the problem and then to recapitalize the bank. The bank had no more money. What was the narrative, sir? 2014, 15? Banks are not lending. There's no money going to the uh, businessmen. And then when you recapitalize banks, banks had something to lend to the new uh, creditors, lend to the new borrowers. And as a result, how much did we give this time in the budget? 70,000 crores. Many members refer to it. Why did I have to give that? Banks had no money. People were coming to borrow, they couldn't give anything because monies were not coming back. NPAs were NPAs. And if they didn't get the money back, how does banks' business go on? After all, bank has to earn money by lending money out. The principal doesn't come, the interest doesn't get serviced. You are an NPA. With many number of NPAs, banks have no business to do because their core investment, which is money, which has to go out, was not there with them. So recapitalization was essential in the interest of the country, and that's what the Prime Minister clearly has advised me to do, and therefore 70,000 crores were given to the banks. And that has helped. 
And that has helped, I'll tell you. That when people started telling there's no liquidity, people started telling liquidity is not there at all. With the help of Reserve Bank of India, I've met up with both the public sector banks and the private sector banks, proved that it was not for want of liquidity, but the flow of liquidity was not happening. Again, quality of assets, I'll come to that for a minute, to show that between the first and the second outreach programs which happened in October, there was even a press release given out. I recall the number approximately, you may refer to the press note and not pin me down to the numbers that I'm quoting here, 2,50,000 crores have been distributed through the public sector banks. How was that possible if we didn't give them liquidity? So, sir, please, recapitalization had a reason and that paid off. And that paid off to clear the sentimental uh, feeling about the Indian economy that there's no liquidity, liquidity is not being available, it is not being made available for people who want to run businesses, MSMEs, people who want to buy uh, seeds or do their uh, agricultural activities, people who wanted to buy vehicles, all of them by category have been given loans. And that's because we were able to recapitalize. The third R, sir, resolution. The resolution of the stressed assets, sir, is expeditiously being done because we have passed the insolvency and bankruptcy code. On that specifically, a lot of information can be shared. And I'm glad to say, first of all, that more than 2,162 corporate insolvency resolution processes were admitted. I can give you data on how many have been resolved. During the month of October 2019, corporate insolvency resolution process has really given a major result. The time taken, I will not talk about, I'll even give you the detail if you have the time, sir, zero to 180 days resolution in five cases have happened. 181 to 270 days, 30 resolutions have happened. 270 days plus 124 resolutions have happened. Average number of days taken for resolving disputes has been 374. So the timeline with which the insolvency and bankruptcy code wanted resolution of these insolvency issues are nearly getting close. We, we wanted it to be done within a year. 374 is the average. We are improving on it. I just want to give you very clearly this figure only because I want people to know that the four R's that we had adopted are purpose serving and the results are visible. If 70,000 crores helped banks spread liquidity, insolvency and bankruptcy code, which was brought during the NDA 1 period, is showing results. And we also very quickly are responding. Please, please, no, 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 not, not allowed. No, also, no, please. Not yielding. Not yielding. Please, please take your seat. We are also uh, responding to periodically amending as is demanded by the companies which are undergoing the process, the NCLT, NCLAT, all of them giving the inputs. We are coming up periodic amendments only because we want to keep it as a robust law. The resolution aspect I've uh, spoken, sir. Reforms. The recently announced, this is particularly about banks because I started with the twin balance sheet problem. The reform steps also resulted in the merger of 10 public sector banks into four entities. Why did we do it? Because many of the banks which were in some parts of the country where they were only the CASA accounts where lots of deposits were being collected did not have an avenue to lend. Whereas banks in some other regions utilized the entire money which they had and could lend, but had to borrow at a higher rate from elsewhere to meet with the additional demand which existed in their regions. That is one of the reasons. Second, when we are able to bring them together, there's a better utilization of the savings which are otherwise lying dormant. Third, Today, we need banks in India which can scale up and meet up with the challenges of the day. 
and therefore we thought it was important. A lot of other matchmaking exercises happened, whether technology are compatible, whether the regional sentiments are all taken care of, and so on. So when we have ma merged banks, that's my fourth R, which is the reform. So recognition of the problem, recapitalization, just so that they can go on with it, and resolution through the IBC for all the, the other side of the balance sheet, and then reforms, which is resulting in better efficient banks. We have even appointed uh, risk managers so that from now at least, the kind of phone banking related risks are averted. Now, obviously, all this will be factored in when we talk about why then the GDP is growing, uh, uh, slowing down. I just want to say one thing, sir. Between 2014 and 19, the GDP accelerated 7.4% in 14-15, 8% in 15-16, 8.2% in 16-17, before the lagged effort, effect of the twin balance sheet set in. And as a result, private investment started suffering because the NPIs were still uh, alive in the banks. They didn't have additional money to go on investing further. So the lagged effect of declining investment caught on and therefore, the GDP growth rate came down to 7.2% in 1718 and 6.88 uh, in 1819. And I also recognize that in the first quarter of 1920, clearly the decline is very pronounced. We are able to see that. I just wanted to put this in context because it has not come from nowhere. It's not dawned on one morning. It's obviously got a trail. If you want to go back to see where the trail lies, you know where it lies. I wanted to highlight that. I wanted to highlight that, sir. Of course, I'll come to that. Don't worry. I will come to that. But that happened much later. The problem was on us even on the dawn of 14 when we came in. Please, please. Sir, again, again, sir. If we are questioned on GST, I'll talk on GST a bit elaborately, but because now I'm in a mood to compare performances. GST was, yes, right, Jairam was right. It was from 2004, it's been on. And there was pressure saying, is India going to be at, at least making that one big effort to make a one market out of this country? Will GST happen at all? How many years did we lose? And there were several members. Oh, yes, don't worry, I'll answer about that also. I've heard that even as you spoke. Sir, I would like to tell you. Yes? Please, please, bad care, bad care, come Nagar, please. Sir, I will tell you. This emphasis on you opposed it, we very clearly highlighted, sir, that the states and the compensation matter. I was glad a lot of our members raised it. States and the compensation matter was not addressed by the UPA. As a result, many of the states did not have the confidence. Are they talking about trust today? Sir, are they talking about trust today? Sir, I didn't, I didn't have a please, running commentary please, when they spoke. Please, 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 please. Please. Mm -hmm. We don't want to interrupt the minister, but Please. the fact is that she should study the bill. Which she went to the standing committee during our time and came back. You should read, please, mm. the letter mm. which the then Chief Minister of Gujarat wrote to the then Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi ji. And you should also read and be informed about the discussions so, so, Rajya Sabha mein lagatar hi jis tarike se arthvyavastha par baat chit ho rahi hai isme Nirmala Sitaraman bhi ludhakti hui arthvyavastha par Rajya Sabha mein bolti hui nazar aayi 